we're going to answer a whole lot of questions about particle motion. So starting off, average velocity is just the slope of the velocity if you were going to graph it from 0 to 8. If you were going to graph a line where you plugged in 0 for t and you plugged in 8 and you graphed those points, it's the slope of that line. So one way to write that is to say the velocity at the end point. This is y2 minus the velocity at the beginning, y1. This is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It's just the slope of the line. So um, I got that this equals the velocity at 8 is 64 minus 72 plus 18. I get that it's 10 over 8. And so the average velocity is 5 fourths, and this is in meters per second. The instantaneous velocity at 5 is pretty much just what you get when you plug 5 into the velocity. And so that's going to be 5 squared is 25 minus 9 times 5 plus 18. This is negative 2 meters per second. So what that means, the speed is the magnitude. So we are going 2 meters per second. And the minus tells us that we're going to the left. Okay, so then we need to know when it's moving to the right. So we noted before that you could take the velocity and factor it into t minus 3 and t minus 6. Well, if we set this equal to 0, that means that at t equals 0, sorry, at t equals 3, our velocity is 0 and at t equals 6, our velocity is 0. And that's where it's stopping to turn around. You can't turn around without first stopping. So we're starting the time, the sign line here at 0, and we're finishing it at 8. But we have this is our velocity sign line. Here at 3, we have a 0. And here at 6, we have a 0. So if we check a value, like plug in 1 into the velocity, um, this is 1 minus 8. This is a positive number. And plug in a number between 3 and 6. Um, we already plugged in 5 and found out it was negative. And then plug in a number between 6 and 8. And if you plug in 7, you get 49 minus 63 plus 18 is a positive number. So whenever the velocity is positive, this is when we're moving to the right. And when it's negative, this is when we're moving to the left. Because if the velocity is negative, it means we're moving left. If the velocity is positive, it means we're moving right. So um, the particle is moving to the right from 0 to 3. And again from 6 to 8 in interval notation. OK, so if it, we want to know when it's going faster or slowing down, we already had the equation for the acceleration. Oh, yuck. Acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. So here's our acceleration sine line. It starts at 0, finishes at 8. And um, the acceleration was 2t minus 9. And so when it's going to the right, it's positive. When it's accelerating to the left, it's negative. And when it's 0 is when you're transitioning from the left to the right. So we have a 0 in acceleration 
at 4.5 or 9 halves. So if I would graph that like right about here, this is 4.5. Before that, like at 1, we have negative, so we're accelerating to the left. And after that, like at 7, we have positive, so we're accelerating to the right. Now, you're only going faster if your acceleration and your velocity have the same sign. Because if you're accelerating to the left, if you're not moving left, you're not speeding up. That's slowing you down. So you have to be accelerating to the left and going to the left to be speeding up or moving to the right and accelerating to the right to be speeding up. If you're accelerating in one direction and moving in the other, you are actually slowing down. So I like to um make little green dashed lines where it, where things change so there's a change here there's a change down here in acceleration here at 4.5 there's a change at 6 and i also like to color code this so i'm going to make negative blue and so this is negative until here and this is negative until here and then I'm going to make positive red or pink. Let's go pink. So it's positive to here. This is positive to here. And this is positive to here. Now, notice that you have lots of intervals. And this one, this first one, where you're going to the right but accelerating left, here's where we're going to be going slowing down. And here where we're moving left and accelerating left, this is where we're speeding up. And here we're moving right but accelerating left, so we're slowing down. And here we're moving right and accelerating to the right, so we're speeding up. Okay, so the time intervals when we are going faster are when the signs are the same. So that's from three until 4.5. That's when acceleration and velocity have the same sign. Also from six to eight, they have the same sign. So then the slowing down is gonna be where the signs are different, which is from zero to three, and also from 4.5 to 6. So then if you want to find the total distance, well, we need to find s at 3 and subtract s at 0, and that'll tell us the total distance from 0 to 3. And that's going to be positive because we're moving to the right. But then when we do the distance from 3 until 6, we're moving to the left, and that would subtract off. So we're going to do the absolute value of the distance at 6 minus the distance at 3, where we're at. This is actually our displacement. This is our position. And then we can add how far we went from 6. Whoops, we should, this should be 8 minus the position at 6. So we have a little more calculating to do here. So our formula for S, which is on the board, um, S of T was 1 third T cubed. And then it was minus 9 halves t squared 
and then it was, what was it, plus 18t plus 1. And so we just need to find these numbers. And we already know that s of 0, we already figured it out that it's 1. Um, s of 3, though, if we plug in 3, we get 27 divided by 3 is 9 minus 4.5 times 9. Oh, I made a mistake. Here we go. So we have 1 third times 3 to the third, and then minus 4.5 times 3 squared, which is 9, and then plus 18 times 3, and then plus 1. So at 3 seconds, we are 23.5, and that's where we stop and we start going left. So we need to know what s of 6 is. So we'll plug in 6. We have 1 third times 6 to the third minus 4.5 times 6 squared plus 18 times 6 plus 1. So when we get to 6, we're only at 19. Now, why did it go down? Well, because after three seconds, we were all the way over at 23.5, and then we went left for three seconds and went back to 19. And now we're going to go right again until the end. So we need to know what S of 8 is. And so we plug 8 in, which I think we already did. No, that was velocity. So this is going to be 1 third times 8 raised to the third minus 4.5 times 8 squared plus 18 times 8 plus 1. So now it's at 20, our particles at 27.667. All right, so here's how far we have traveled. Notice we didn't start at 0, we started at 1. So our first interval is S3 minus S0. So this is 2 point I this is 23.5 minus 1. So in the first interval, we actually traveled 22.5 units to the right. We started at 1. And we finished at 23.5, which means we only traveled 22.5. Then when we go S6 minus S3, we need the absolute value of 19 minus 23.5. And so that gives us negative 4.5. And then absolute value means we traveled 4.5 units to the left, but they asked for total distance. And then we're going to go S8 minus S6. So we're going to do our 27.6666666 minus 19. And then we traveled another 8.667 units to the right. So the total distance we traveled is the sum of all those, which is 35 and two-thirds meters, or 1.6. Make sure I got that. Yeah. If you want not a mixed fraction, this would be 107 over 3 meters is the total distance that we traveled. So those are the answers to all of those questions.